Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Whole bunch of updates lately. Did a story a little while back about the hospital workers in Wisconsin. That story had a good ending, so I did a follow-up on that. I also did a story recently about the police department in Brookside, Alabama, and how many tickets they write down there and how picky they are with the tickets. And so we've got an update on that because, as several people sent me overnight, Brookside Police Chief Mike Jones resigns. The police chief who was quoted in one of the stories as saying that he thought they actually ought to be writing more tickets and that they were doing a great job. He's now resigned, so he's no longer police chief. ABC 33 and 40 confirms from police dispatch within the town of Brookside that police chief Mike Jones has resigned. They are working to try to figure out who is in control right now of the police department moving forward. Presumably there is some succession plan, okay? Uh, But as of right now, Mike Jones no longer in charge. They're told that the mayor is going to meet with a council member and the city clerk to discuss the matter. But the town council released a statement, which I will now read to you verbatim. Thank you for your inquiry concerning the recent news accounts about our police department. As the town council for our town, it is one of our primary responsibilities to provide our town and its citizens with a safe place to live and raise our families. In fulfilling this obligation, the town council determined that our citizens would be best served by our police department being able to provide 24-hour, 7-day police protection. In large part, we believe that having a full-time police department has achieved this goal. However, the recent news accounts have raised serious issues that we will be investigating and addressing in the near future. Once that process has been completed, we'll update you. Until then, we will not have any further comments. Now, you'll notice it sounds like they took action. It sounds like they took action. They determined... And we believe that having uh, uh, recent news have raised serious issues. We're investigating and addressing, and we'll update you. Now, the headline says the man resigned. And so there are a lot of situations, I'm sure you're aware of, where someone knows that they're on the way out, and they say, ah, I quit, and they resign to get ahead of that. So we don't know if he saw the handwriting on the wall or if he just resigned because he was sick of all the publicity Or if he was pushed out and they said, look, we can fire you or you can quit, take your pick. We don't know. We don't know. Any of those things are possible. Don't know. So that's the entire story from ABC 3340. So I looked up WVTM 13. And they say Brookside Police Chief resigns amid personnel issues, according to town. Personnel, not personal. (laughs) I first thought this was a typo. (laughs) that Maybe the man is having personal issues. But it turns out it says personnel issues. They say the chief of police at a central Alabama police department resigned amid personnel issues on Tuesday. The town of Brookside confirmed that Chief Mike Jones resigned from his position in a brief press release Tuesday afternoon, which I did just read to you. The release said the town has no further comment on Jones's resignation since it involves a personnel matter. A personnel matter. It was recently reported that the Brookside Police Department is being sued by multiple people for discrimination and unlawful procedures. And I would urge you to go read that article, a big, big article uh, on the Internet. In fact, I'll put another link to that article in the description below this video to make sure you can read it if you want to. Because the stuff that was going on there was just so out of control. And it was a tiny little town that has a highway running right down one side of it. And they were writing so many tickets basically to people either passing through town or going down that stretch of highway, that it's pretty clear they were just simply writing tickets to generate revenue. And if you wanted to fight the ticket, number one, you go to the hearing and you lose because that's the standard on tickets is usually lower than the criminal standard. And so if you want to fight the ticket, you have to post a bond and take it up on appeal. And appealing the ticket to the next higher court can cost money, usually needs an attorney, waste more time, and quite often they make you post twice the amount of the fines and costs to do the appeal. So if you got hit with 500 bucks in fines and costs, you have to post a $1,000 bond to take it up on appeal. And some of the stories were outrageous. And for instance, they have a whole bunch of vehicles in their police fleet. Only one of them is marked. The other ones are all blacked out SUVs with no markings on them. And so you're driving along and some vehicle goes by with all blacked out windows, spins around and pulls you over. And uh, it just it just a lot of it was very unseemly, and a lot of it just seems like it's not mathematically possible. The amount of money they were raising off those tickets made it quite clear, quite clear that the town and the police department were just out of control. 
And and so I know people were complaining because the stories that I read talked about how it's a town that's kind of north uh, of, El- of Birmingham, Alabama. And I had some people say, Steve, it's the same town. Well, no, it's not. Birmingham is a town and so is Brookside. As to how close together they are, it doesn't really matter. The point is that there's this one town with this police department, with this one court, and they're doing all this crazy stuff with their tickets. And a lot of people are saying, why aren't the feds involved? Why isn't the state involved? Why doesn't the attorney general go look into this? Why, why don't, you know, and, and they very well could be. They probably are. So that also could be what's going on here, is that the town realizes, hey, we've got so much attention being paid to us right now. And the most obvious thing we could do right now would be a personnel change, a personnel change. So the uh, other article I found was on the Daily Beast, and it says Alabama police chief resigns amid ticket trap uproar, ticket trap uproar. Um, Alabama police chief accused of turning his force into a money-making machine and his town into a giant ticket trap resigned on Tuesday. The investigation and the story I mentioned before is by AL.com. AL.com. And that investigation was into Brookside Chief Mike Jones, and it sparked calls nationwide for state and federal investigations. Uh, The news site revealed that even though there is just six miles of road in town and only 1,253 residents, it collected over $600,000 in fines and forfeitures in 2020. And the police chief grew that force to include 10 vehicles that patrolled a stretch of I-22 and nabbed motorists for minor or allegedly fabricated offenses. So, for instance, apparently in some of the litigation, they got police officers to admit they were writing tickets for laws that didn't exist because there have been recent changes in the law about when you can be ticketed for improper use of the left lane on the highway. And I'm not going to get into the technicalities of that ticket, but there were problems there. So there are lawsuits going on, and generally speaking... If you get written a ticket, you go to court and you fight the ticket. Police officer takes the stand and testifies about the circumstances of the writing of the ticket. And if you have an attorney or if you yourself do it, you can cross-examine that police officer and, and, and poke holes at their story best you can. And the issue, though, is that once the police officer leaves the stand, all you got was just the testimony, direct and cross, of the one witness. But there are lawsuits pending, and during the discovery of the lawsuit, during the discovery phase, apparently, attorneys are bringing these police officers in, putting them under oath, and grilling them about their procedures. And you can ask a lot more at a deposition than you can in court. So in court, for instance, when the person gets on the stand and testifies, cross-examination is going to limit you to what they just testified about, and a few other things you can always go after, such as bias and foundation and so on. But for instance, you might have a hard time asking the police officer about other tickets they write, because a judge might say, that's not, re- that's not relevant. You got one ticket, let's talk about your one ticket. Okay, and I can see a judge doing that. So when you're deposing this person, and you're asking them about the ticket they wrote your client, you can also say, by the way, let's talk about all the other tickets you write. Because in a civil setting, discovery allows you to go for not just things that are relevant, but things that could lead to discovery of relevant evidence and so on. And it's a much, much broader net that you get to toss out there. And so some of these lawsuits appear to be looking at how this stuff is so inherent in the system that they're writing these tickets. And so obviously, if you write lots of bad tickets it makes it a much better case that you wrote my client a bad ticket. Now, I know some people are going to say, Steve, if that's true, why couldn't you do that in a criminal case? And, and you could make the argument. You could make the argument. But a judge who's got hundreds of trials to do, because they set all these trials the same day, apparently, is going to ask you to speed things along and, and say, look, I don't want you up here on a fishing expedition. Ask questions about this ticket, this incident, this police officer, and your client, and let's narrow the scope to keep it moving. And so I can see that happening, but I would be fascinated to read the depositions of these police officers taken by attorneys who've got the time and the scope to cover much, much more. And that would be, to me, the entertainment here. But we don't have access to that yet. Not sure if we'll ever have access to that. But as of right now, the police chief has resigned. 
And keep in mind that if you go through the story that I'm going to put the link to in the description below, that the police chief was actually quite proud of what he was doing. And he actually thought they could probably hire a few more cops and write some more tickets because they were writing tickets, but he thought they could write more. Well, it turns out he won't get to write more, at least not for Brookside, because he has now resigned due to personnel issues. Not personal, personnel. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Got to thank everyone who sent to me. Mark, Suze, Jason, James, Jeff, Harry, Christine, JJ, Tim, Roger, William, Sam, and Nathan. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. They say the universe is expanding. That should help with traffic.